This is uh, with Jesus feeding the thousands and then teaching them, and they don't like that teaching, and they all leave. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. So this is important for us. Uh, life can be very deceiving. You can think that you're living and you're going to continue living forever. It can seem that way sometimes. It's very deceptive, but at one sickness, one illness, and, and life is over. And sometimes as we get older, we see death more prominent around us, and we realize this, but death, is, death can be deceiving. Uh, the Bible is clear, though, that there is going to be a last day, a final day, where there is no more life. Uh, no more ongoing as things are going now, that there is going to be a final day. There is going to be ultimate judgment. And who is in charge of this last day? And who is in charge of this judgment that is coming upon the world? It's Jesus Christ himself. Now, the beauty is that you can know exactly what will happen to you on that last day. That you can know beyond the shadow of a doubt, as Jesus says, you will be raised up on the last day. Who will be raised up on the last day? All those who believe in him. Because he is, the, he is the author of life. He is the one who gives eternal life. He is God the Son who came to live, to die for the sins of all who believe in him. So we get to heaven not based on our own righteousness because we have none. Uh, we get to heaven based on his righteousness. So we have the guaranteed inheritance in heaven, guaranteed eternal life. So it's important as we go through this life, though, to acknowledge this, Jesus preached about the last day a lot. One of my, uh, one of the pastors or preachers that, that we looked into as we we're going through the church history a while back was Charles Spurgeon. Charles Spurgeon wrote more about death than any pastor. Every single sermon, he reminded the people, and he would say outright, clearly, and boldly, sometimes yelling, "You are going to die." And it was like, that, that, you don't think that would be a way to grow a mega church, but it worked. <laughs> it was the biggest church in the world. Uh, he would remind them steadily, constantly. Why? Because he wanted them to be rocked. He wanted them to stop this life for a moment, think about death, and think that everyone, I am going to die. We are all going. What does that matter in the end? You better know where you are going. And Jesus is the source of eternal life. There is going to be a last day for everyone. And the only solution is Jesus Christ. Look at verse 49, John chapter 12. He goes on to say, For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the authority who's, uh, but the Father who sent me has given, himself, given me himself, given a commandment, what to say and what to speak. And I'm not going to speak too much on that because we've kind of covered that already. But over and over again, we see that Jesus is saying, Look, I'm not saying this on my own accord. I've been sent from the Father, authorized by Him. He has given me the message. I am delivering that message to you. Go on to verse 50. And I know that His commandment is eternal life. What I say, therefore, I say as the Father has told me. Now, Jesus' command is to, God's command, the Father, is to believe in Christ for eternal life. And that belief equals eternal life. The promise of eternal life is common is another common theme of the book of John. Over and over we see eternal life, eternal life, eternal life. Eternal life is tied into the being of Jesus Christ. A couple of verses and we'll be done. Look at John 3. John 3, verse 34 through 36. We've read several already that have mentioned the eternal life aspect, how it's tied into Jesus, but just a couple of more. Verse 34 through 36, For he whom God has sent utters the words of God, for he gives the Spirit without measure. The Father loves the Son and has given all things into his hand. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. Whew, powerful passage here. So we can know that we have eternal life. Look at, the, look at verse 36. He says, whoever believes in the Son, it's not will have eternal life, but has eternal life. And this is a wonderful thing that we can know, even while we're alive right now, in this temporary body, this temporary life, that we have eternal life. That's why Paul could say things like, right, to be absent from the body, as a believer, is to be present with God. 
that there is no in between, there is no death in between. You go from life to life because you have eternal life now. All those who believe in Jesus Christ. However, those who do not see Jesus, who do not obey Jesus, who do not believe in Him, God's wrath remains on Him. That is not eternal life. Last verse, John 5, verse 24 says this, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but is passed from death to life. Wow. So here we see that Jesus is eternal life. The command of God is to believe in Jesus, and that is eternal life. We do not look to what we've done as, as, as uh, our works to what will get us into heaven? Have we been good or bad? Is there some kind of scale in heaven? No. We look to Jesus Christ. Those who believe in Him have eternal life. In summary, God has made it abundantly clear that He has sent Jesus. We can know and trust beyond the shadow of a doubt that Jesus is who He claimed to be. It is His words that we must listen to, believe, and submit to. He is the Savior and will be the final judge over all mankind. Where you go on the last day depends on what you have done with Jesus while you were alive. Do you see Him as the light? Have you been transferred out of the darkness by God? If not, uh, what should you do? You should repent of your sin. You should believe in Jesus Christ. As Jesus passionately called them to believe in Him. This is, what, this is what we do. This is what we are called to do. Repent and believe today. If you have seen the light, then make sure that you're walking as children of the light. Sometimes we stumble. Sometimes there's darkness in our path. What should you do? Don't go that direction, right? We pray, God, forgive me for that sin. Repent of that sin and keep letting the word shine on our path and shine on our feet. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we covered a lot of information today. I pray that we would put this in our minds, into our hearts, and that we would uh, contemplate these things and rest assured that Jesus has been sent uh, by you and that, this is, that, that we have the right Messiah. We have the right Christ. We have the only way of salvation and that in him we have eternal life. We possess that eternal life. We have been transferred out of the kingdom of Satan, out of the kingdom of darkness, into the light and now we bear the light as children of the light god i pray that you would uh, let your light shine on our lives expose the darkness within us or sins that are within us so that we may walk even brighter in this dark world for you help us not to get so bogged down in this world that we forget that this life is so temporary there is a last day coming and yes we do die we have eternal life Help us to make the most of this life that you have given us. Help us to, as, as the message you gave to Paul uh, went forth, help us to do the same, to bear the gospel, share the gospel, and trust that that gospel is the power to open people's eyes so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified. Uh, we thank you for the glorious gospel that we have heard. And God, we pray for anyone today who is not in the light. And we plea, Lord, that they would believe in Jesus Christ for salvation, for forgiveness of sins, that they might receive eternal life today. It's in his name we pray.